Welcome to How To Music Tech. This is part one in this series. Just a quick introduction. In this series of videos, we'll be going through the manual bit by bit of the Zoom B6. This is a bass guitar multi effects unit. It can save up to 240 patches across 60 banks. It has four different play modes. You get looper, memory, bank and patch, and effect board mode. As well as the looper, you get a drum machine. Uh, you can hook up your external effects via the send and return on the back panel, as well as an uh, auxiliary in for connecting an external music player device, as well as the option to have two bass guitars connected and switch between the two using a foot switch. Additionally, you have DI modelling capabilities. Welcome to Howty Music Tech. This is part two in this series. Controls overview. In the top left, you have the play mode foot switch, which is located up here. You can use this to change between modes. You get looper, effect board, bank patch, and memory. To the right of this, you have the touch screen located here. And directly underneath, you have the parameter knobs used to adjust parameters and other settings. To the right of the screen, you have the tap foot switches located here. Use this to adjust the tempo. Uh, if you press and hold that, you'll uh, enter the tuner. At the bottom are the foot switches used to change patches and banks, located here, as well as turning effects on and off and operating the looper. On the right of the unit, you get three additional foot switches, located here. At the top is the foot switch to select between the two inputs. You can have two bass guitars connected at the same time. If you press this, you'll change between the two inputs. Underneath is the DI type foot switch, allowing you to select between uh, two tube or two solid state options. And at the bottom is the bypass foot switch, uh, used to bypass all effects or all effects and the DI section. Welcome to How To Music Tech. This is part three in this series, the rear panel. For the input jacks, you have two inputs, so you can have two bases connected at the same time, located just here. You can use the foot switch on the right hand side to change between the two. Each input has its own impedance selection switch. It can be set between 1 and 10 ohms to suit the connected base, uh, usually 1 for ordinary electric bases or 10 for acoustic bases for piezo pickups. For outputs, you get an XLR output. Uh, use the switch to connect or disconnect the ground connection, which is next to the um, output on the back, and a quarter inch jack for connection to an amp, monitor, speakers or headphones. You also get an external loop. Uh, you get two jacks on the back to uh, connect the send jack to the input of your external effect and connect the return jack to the output of your external effect. You also get an SD card slot. It accepts SD card conforming to SD, SDHC and SDXC. You can use this to save loops or add your own audio as loops. You also get the power switch located on the back on the left. Use this to turn the unit on and off. You get a DC 9 volt input. Use the dedicated Zoom AD16 adapter for this. You get an auxiliary in for connecting an external audio device. You get a master knob which adjusts the overall master volume of the B6. You get a control in jack to connect a Zoom FP02M pedal here to adjust pedal effects. On the rear you also get a remote connector which you connect a Zoom BTA1 or other dedicated wireless adapter there. This enables wireless control of the B6 from an iPhone or iPad using the Handy Guitar Lab. You get a micro USB micro B port Use this to connect to a computer. The B6 can also be used as an audio interface and can also be used as a card reader. Welcome to How To Music Tech. This is part four in this series. Menu screen functions. Um, on the drop down menu, uh, you get edit effects for adjusting effect parameters. You get add effects to add effects in patch memories. Change if amp effects, change effects and amps in patch memories. You get edit patch settings, so you can set patch memory names and levels. You got play with rhythm to use the rhythm and drum machine. You got use IR to use impulse responses. 
You've got create bank to create banks, change patch memory order to change the patch memory order, delete patch memories, set system settings to change and check system settings and manage SD cards. You've got set USB audio, uh, change effect order, uh, delete effects to delete effects in patch memories, uh, create patch memory, edit all to make all settings for patch memories, use send return, uh, import IR to load impulse response data, change bank order, delete bank, save patch memory, set tempo uh, used for the effects rhythms and looper, and set the auto save function. In addition to those, you also get set power display to adjust the touchscreen brightness and turn eco mode on or off. Uh, use tuner to access the tuner. Set preselect to turn the preselect function on or off. You got play mode effect board, play mode looper, uh, play mode bank and patch, play mode memory to enter the different play modes. You got set output EQ volume to set the tone and other characteristics of the output sounds for each input channel and set tuner. Items on the menu screen can also be reordered left, right, up and down by touching and dragging them. So you can rearrange your menu as best suits you. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 5 in this series. How to switch the unit on and off. To turn the unit on, uh, minimise the volume on the amp or speakers you're using and then set the switch on the rear panel to on. The switch is located on the left on the back. Uh, the screen will open on the play mode that was last used. Uh, once it's up you can raise the volume of the amp or speakers. To turn the unit off, minimise the volume of the amp or speakers you're using and then use the switch on the back to turn the unit off and then the screen will become blank. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 6 in this series. How to select the input being used. Uh, the B6 has the option of having two bass guitars connected at the same time. Ensure you have the basses connected to inputs 1 and 2 on the back, located here. Make sure that the impedance selection is correct for the type of bass. You have 1 ohm for a normal electric bass and 10 ohms for an acoustic bass with piezo pickups. Uh, once properly connected, you can switch between the two inputs using the dedicated foot switch. Input selection will change with each press and LED will indicate which input is in use. So currently we're on input number 1. If you press the foot switch, it will change to input number 2. And then press it again to go back. And it's as easy as that. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 7 in this series. How to select the DI type. And the Zoom B6 has four selectable DI types. You get two options for vacuum tubes and two for solid state. Use the foot switch to switch between the four types or to switch it off altogether. The LED will indicate which is in use. If there's no LED it indicates the DI is off. The DI section affects the output from the balanced out and the amp line out. Tube number one, this model is the characteristic of a vacuum tube DI with rich harmonics and thick low frequencies. Tube two, this model is the characteristics of a vacuum tube DI with a clear attack and tight low frequencies. Solid state one, this models the characteristics of a solid state DI with moderate compression and a sharp tone. Solid state 2. This models the characteristics of a solid state DI with a clear tone and little distortion. And if you press it again, it will be unlit, which means the DI section is currently off. Welcome to How To Music Tech. This is part 8 in this series. How to use the bypass function. Uh, the effects section of the B6 can be bypassed. Uh, in addition to the effects, you can also bypass the DI section and you can use the dedicated foot switch to do this. The foot switch for this is located at the bottom right of the unit. 
Uh, if you press on the foot switch, an EFX bypass comes up. This bypass is the effects section only. Only the DI section is currently being used. If you press it again, you'll get all bypass. So this bypass is the effects and the DI sections. And if you press it again, this means that nothing is being bypassed. Welcome to How To Music Tech. This is part nine in this series. How to adjust the master level. Uh, to adjust the master level on the B6, use the dedicated knob, which is on the rear panel, located just here. Um, if you turn it uh, anti-clockwise, you will lower the master volume. And if you turn it clockwise, you will raise the volume by up to six decibels. Welcome to How To Music Tech. This is part 10 in this series. How to adjust the EQ and volume for each input. First of all, select the input you want to adjust using the foot switch. So we'll start with input number one. Uh, then adjust to adjust the master EQ settings, turn one of the parameter knobs in either memory, bank patch, or effect mo board mode. This will open the EQ. This comes up on the screen here. Uh, then you can use the parameter knobs to adjust the low the mid and the high frequencies and then you can also do the volume and this is just for this input. Uh, you can also lock these settings if you press the lock at the top here. Um, orange is locked, white is unlocked. Uh, you can press the input foot switch to bring up the EQ and volume for the other input at the same time. So you can change between the two. Uh, once finished, the previous screen, as you can see, will appear after just a couple of moments. Welcome to How To Music Tech. This is part 11 in this series. How to invert the phase of the B6 output. Uh, during live performances, bass amps and monitor speakers can interfere with each other, making the sound weaker. Uh, the B6 has an option which could prevent this. If you open the menu, like here, and select Set Output EQ Volume. And then on the bottom right, you select the Phase Invert to either On or Off. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 12 in this series. How to turn effects on or off while playing. Uh, press the play mode foot switch, which is this one here, until you reach the effect board. Foot switches can now turn their assigned effect on or off. Uh, shown on the screen will be the chain and which foot switch is assigned to which effect. So effect 1 is currently for the uh, boost. Effect number 2 is for the reverb. And effect number three is for the delay. And then you can press each one to turn it on or off. And the LED goes out here and the um, light on the screen will go off as well. And then you can turn it back on by pressing the foot switch again. Welcome to How To Music Tech. This is part 13 in this series. How to assign a foot switch to an effect. Press the play mode button until you reach effect board, which is this mode here. And then the top right of the screen, press the foot switch icon. And then you'll get a foot switch appear above all the effects. Um, touch the effects you want to assign to a foot switch. Uh, the foot switches are always assigned from left to right accordingly. So if you want the boost and the reverb, it will automatically go to effect 1 and 2. Uh, so if you press boost, it will go to effect number 1. Even though the delay is on the other side of the uh, chain, if you press it, it will go to effect number two. If then, for instance, you wanted to include effect, uh, the reverb to be included as, as a foot switch, if you press it, it will go to effect number two and the delay will move to effect number three. Just like so. And then if you want to turn them off, you can turn it off. If you turn off the boost, um, everything will move over one as well. Just like so. Welcome to How To Music Tech. This is part 14 in this series. How to switch banks and patches. Press the play mode foot switch until you reach bank and patch. Which is this mode here. 
Uh, the screen will now show the name of the current bank, which is on the top in white. Underneath will show the current patch within that bank. Now you can then use the touch screen to change patch by swiping up for the next patch or down for the previous patch. Like so. Alternatively, you can also use the foot switches uh, to use change between banks and patches. If you press foot switch number one, it'll go down the list of banks. Foot switch number two will go up for the list of banks. Uh, if you press foot switch number three, it will go to the previous patch. And effect uh, foot switch number four will go to the next patch. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 15 in this series. How to activate and use the pre-select function. Uh, the pre-select mode can be used in bank and patch mode. This makes it possible to switch directly to another patch that is not located by the current patch. This is ideal for a live situation. To turn the pre-select function on, open the menu like we have done here and then select set pre-select which is currently located here and then turn this on using the selector here uh, you can keep it off if you like to switch the function off once you're finished press the back button and then close the menu now that we've turned the pre-select function on to select another patch um, use the bank and patch um, foot switches down here and then it will show up on the screen that we're moving to a different uh, bank so you want to go to a different patch within that bank right so we want to move from the uh, patch we're currently on to this new patch uh, when you're ready to change so you can do this in advance when you're ready to change press the play mode foot switch to enter and you'll automatically change directly to that patch without having to scroll through and hear all the other sounds in between. Just like so. Welcome to Howty Music Tech, this is part 16 in this series. How to switch patches in one bank in memory mode. Uh, press the play mode foot switch until you have selected memory mode, which is this mode here. Uh, in memory mode shows the current bank and the four patches within that bank. So this is the current bank and these are the four patches. This is the current selected patch. Uh, to change patches, you can use the corresponding foot switches. Um, you can also select the desired patch using the touch screen. Just touch the one you want to, want to use. Uh, to switch banks in memory mode, use the up and down arrows on the left and right of the bank name on the touch screen. Uh, press down to go down a bank and then press up to go up a bank. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 17 in this series. How to reorder patches in a bank in memory mode. In memory mode, which is this mode here, press and hold a patch and then drag and drop it to the desired location. For example, if you move patch 1 to position 3, The patch that was in position 2 now moves to position 1. The patch in position 3 would have moved to position 2 to make room for moving position 1 to position 3. Welcome to How To Music Tech. This is part 18 in this series. How to access the looper. There are two ways in which you can access the looper on the B6. Uh, first of all, you can use the play mode foot switch, which is located here. Press it until you have selected looper, just like so. This will open the looper control screen. Uh, alternatively, you can use the touch screen and open the menu and select play mode looper. This will also open the same screen. Welcome to How To Music Tech. This is part 19 in this series. How to use the looper. Uh, once you're on the looper control sc screen, which is what we're on now, the display will show ready if no loop has been recorded, like it's showing now. 
To record a loop, press the foot switch corresponding to the record and play, or alternatively you can press record on the touch screen. Um, if during recording you want to discard it and start over, you can press stop, uh, either on the touch screen or the foot switch. This will cancel that and you can start again. If you start recording, um, if you're happy with your loop and how it's going, uh, you can press the play button or the play foot switch to stop recording and automatically start playback. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 20 in this series. How to stop and start looper playback. Uh, once a loop has been recorded and you're in playback mode, which is what we're in now, uh, press the stop foot switch to stop loop playback. Alternatively, you can press the touch screen. So if you press stop, it will stop playback. To restart loop playback, uh, press the record and play foot switch to start playback. Alternatively, press play on the touch screen. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 21 in this series. How to overdub on the looper. Uh, when you've recorded a loop and are playing it back, like we are currently now, you can record overdubs on top of it. Uh, to do so, press the record play foot switch or touch overdub on the screen. Uh, the loop will continue to play, uh, but you'll now record over the top. Uh, this can be done continuously for multiple layers. When you're finished recording, press the record play foot switch or touch play on the screen. Uh, overdub recording will stop, but the loop will continue to play back. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 22 in this series. How to undo and redo the last overdub. Uh, once you've recorded a loop with overdubs, you have the option of undoing the past, last overdub you recorded. To undo the last overdub, press the undo redo foot switch, which is located here, or you can press undo on the touch screen. If you do this, it will remove the last overdub from the recorded loop. You can undo. If you have undone the last recorded overdub but want to restore it back to the loop, uh, you can press the undo redo foot switch or touch the redo on the screen. So over here or number three, foot switch three. And this will redo the last undone overdub. Welcome to How To Music Tech. This is part 23 in this series. How to clear a loop. Once you've recorded a loop, you may need to get rid of it so you can start again. Uh, to clear a loop, press the clear foot switch located here, it's foot switch number four. Alternatively, you can press clear on the touch screen. And that will clear the loop that was currently recorded so you can start again fresh. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 24 in this series. Things to know about the looper. Uh, the tempo that is set in the looper is also used by any effects or rhythm patterns. If you change the tempo but have set the loop recording time, this will delete the current recorded loop. If you change the tempo during rhythm playback, this will also delete the current recorded loop. If you're using the rhythm function with the looper and have set a pre-count, recording will start after the pre-count. If you have any sound input through the auxiliary in, it will not be recorded on the looper. Uh, you can use the other play modes once you have recorded a loop, just cycle through with the foot switch. Uh, the looper playback status will be shown in the top left of the screen if you're in another mode. But note you must return to the looper screen to control the looper. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 25 in this series. How to set the loop recording time. Uh, the loop recording time can be set for a specific time or you can use the foot switch or touch screen to start stop recording manually. Uh, use knob number three on the looper screen to set the loop recording time. This one here. Uh, if you have it on manual, which is currently on, uh, it will be the foot switches that controls the loop. Or you can set the value between one to 64 quarter notes. Uh, if you set the value, the actual loop time will be determined by the current tempo. If you have set the recording time, once the loop reaches that point, it will stop recording and automatically start playback. 
Welcome to How To Music Tech. This is part 26 in this series. How to adjust the looper volume. Uh, once you're on the looper screen, which is this screen here, you can use knob number four uh, to adjust the looper volume. Uh, alternatively, you can use the touch screen. Um, the volume for the looper can be set between zero and 100. Welcome to How To Music Tech. This is part 27 in this series. How to set the looper to mono or stereo. Open the looper screen, which is on now, and press the looper settings near the top right of the screen. Uh, this opens the looper control settings, and then you can touch mono or stereo to select the desired setting. Uh, mono loops can record two to 90 seconds, and stereo loops can record 2 to 45 seconds. Uh, if you're using an SD card, loops are fixed to stereo. Welcome to How To Music Tech. This is part 28 in this series. How to set the looper stop mode. On the looper screen, which is this screen here, press the looper settings near the top right of the screen. Uh, this opens the looper control settings. And then you can touch the desired setting to change it. Uh, you get instant, so the loop will stop instantly. Uh, you have finish, where the loop will continue until the end of the loop. And then you get fade out, where the loop will stop after fading out. Welcome to How To Music Tech. This is part 29 in this series. How to change the position of the looper pre or post effects. On the looper screen, Press the looper settings in the top right of the screen. This opens the looper control settings. And from there you can touch the desired setting to change it. At the bottom you get pre or post effects. If you place the looper before the effects, this allows you to alter the sound of the recorded loop without having to continue playing. So you can potentially record a loop and then go through adjusting parameters until you're happy with the sound. So you can select pre or post effects. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 30 in this series. How to save a loop to an SD card. Uh, if you have an SD card inserted, you can save loops to the SD card. Uh, use the play mode foot switch to select looper. This will open the looper screen. Uh, if an SD card is in use, the SD icon will appear next to the looper settings, just up here. Uh, new loop file should also appear on screen. Uh, you can then create a loop as you would do normally, shown in the previous videos. Once a loop has been created, pressing the clear button will automatically save the loop to the SD card. Uh, loops will be saved sequentially starting from looper 001. Uh, loops cannot be deleted from the B6 and must be done so using a computer. Uh, with an SD card, loop recording time can be up to two hours long. Welcome to How To Music Tech. This is part 31 in this series. How to select a saved loop from the SD card. As long as you have an SD card inserted and have recorded loops to it, you can access them from the B6. Make sure you are on the looper screen, like we are now, and then press the SD icon next to the looper settings. This will bring up all the saved loops that you have. Uh, press 1 to bring it up. And now you can play this loop. Uh, if you want to change um, to another loop on the SD card, press the ID SD card icon again and select a different loop. Welcome to How To Music Tech. This is part 32 in this series. How to save changes after editing effects. The auto save function on the B6 is on by default, so when adjusting any patches, either by changing effects or effect parameters, the changes will be saved automatically without having to do anything. If the auto save function has been turned off, an icon will appear in the top right if you have made any changes to the current patch, as you can see here. This shows that the patch is different from its saved settings. If you want to save it as it is, Press on the icon and save the patch as necessary. 
Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 33 in this series. How to turn effects on and off from the menu. Uh, select a patch memory that has an effect or effects you want to turn on or off. On the menu screen, select Edit All. From here you can touch the indicator above each effect to turn it either on or off. On, there will be a red light above the effect. Off, the light above the effect will be off. Just like so. Welcome to How To Music Tech. This is part 34 in this series. How to replace an effect. Uh, select the patch memory with an effect you would like to replace. Um, on there, press the menu and select change amp effect. Touch the effect you want to change. This will bring up the list of effects in that category and then you can touch the effect you want to replace. So these are all the modulation effects. So we'll select another one. When you've, when you've made your selection, press OK in the top right and that will change it. If you want to change an effect to an effect from a different category, uh, on the menu press change amp effect. Uh, touch the effect you want to change. Press back on the top to open up the categories of effects. Click on the category you want, choose the effect from that category. Uh, press OK in the top right when you've made your selection and that will change it for you. Welcome to Outing Music Tech, this is part 35 in this series. Process overflow, what to do. The B6 allows up to six effects to can be combined in a chain per patch. However, you cannot exceed the limit of the processor. Uh, when you select an effect, you can see the amount of processing power each individual effect takes up shown here on the right in a percentage. In addition to this, there is a bar at the bottom right um, of the screen showing the total processing power being used in the chain. If you select an effect that will take the processor, processor over the limit, the effect will not be selected and a process overflow warning will appear. Just like so. Uh, in this case, you will need to change or delete an effect from the chain. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 36 in this series. How to adjust effect parameters. Uh, select a patch that has an effect you would like to adjust. Then use the menu to select Edit Effects. Touch the effect that you would like to edit. This brings up the adjustable parameters for that effect. You can then use the knob underneath the display that corresponds to the parameter on the screen. So each knob corresponds to the parameter shown on screen. Larger effects that appear bigger on the effects board use up two effect spaces. Large effects have more adjustable parameters. Uh, this is displayed across two screens. To change screen, press the arrow located here. This will bring up the other parameters that are adjustable. Again, each knob corresponds to the parameter shown on screen. If you want to go back to the previous screen of parameters, press the arrow that's now on the left. Welcome to How To Music Tech. This is part 37 in this series. How to change the effect order. Uh, effects in a chain can be reordered as desired. Select the patch you want to reorder and then use the menu and select change effect order. Then press and hold an effect to select it and then drag and drop it to the new position. Just like so. And then when you're happy with how you want your chain, just press back and then up to get rid of the menu. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 38 in this series. How to add an effect to the chain. 
Select the patch that you wish to add an effect to. Then use the drop down menu and select add effects. And then you can drag and drop this uh, new grey icon here to where you'd like to insert your new effect. And then press on the touch, uh, the, the plus sign. This brings up the uh, list of categories. So select a category and then select the effect from that category. When you've done so, press the OK button in the top right. And this will add it to your chain. If you've got space for another effect, um, you'll get another grey icon. You can also drag and drop that to where you would like. Press on it again. Select a different effect. And add that to your chain as well. Welcome to How To Music Tech. This is part 39 in this series. How to delete an effect from the chain. Select the patch that you wish to delete an effect from. Now you see drop down menu to select delete effects. Uh, touch the cross icon above an effect that you want to remove and this will delete it from the chain. Just like so. Welcome to Howty Music Tech. This is part 40 in this series. How to use the edit all option. Uh, on the patch that you would like to edit all, open the men menu, select edit all. On this screen you can turn effects on and off using the buttons on the top. Uh, you can change your amps and effects by pressing change effects. Uh, you can also change the effect order by dragging and dropping. In ad addition to those you can add and delete effects using these two here. You can change the name of the patch by going to the um, up here. You can adjust effect parameters by clicking on the effect and you can set the level of the patch in the patch settings. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 41 in this series. How to set the individual patch volume. Uh, select the patch you want to adjust the volume of, open the menu and select edit patch settings which is currently located down here. Uh, from here you can use knob number 4, which is this one here, to adjust the level in, for this individual patch or you can use a touch screen. Uh, the volume can be set from 0 to 120. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 42 in this series. How to change the name of a patch. Uh, select the patch you want to change the name of, and then open the menu and click on Edit Patch Settings. Uh, touch the keyboard, located to the left of the name. Uh, from there you can use the keyboard to change the name so we're going to go ahead and delete this and then we're going to put in our own name uh, when you're finished and you've chosen the name press enter to confirm welcome to how to music tech this is part 43 in this series how to adjust the master tempo uh, the master tempo is used by the rhythms, looper, delay effects and submodulation effects. To adjust the master tempo, open the menu and press on set tempo. Uh, you can then adjust the tempo in a number of different ways. Uh, you can press the keyboard located here and input the tempo manually. Press enter when you're finished. Uh, you can turn knob number four to set the tempo. Uh, you can tap on screen to set the tempo or you can tap using the foot switch to set the tempo. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 44 in this series. How to save a patch. Uh, the auto save function is on by default. Uh, if you have set this to off you'll need to save changes as you make them. To select the patch that you have adjusted and want to save and then open the menu and then select save patch memory and then when you've chosen your location press save in the top right 
and then press save again to confirm. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 45 in this series. How to save a patch to another location. Uh, select the patch you want to change location of, open the menu, select save patch memory, um, select the destination you want to save the current patch. So we're going to go to here, uh, press save, and then you'll get another are you sure message, press save again to confirm and it will change your location. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 46 in this series. How to change the order of patch memories. Uh, open the menu screen and then click on change patch memory order. Uh, then on the right of each patch you get three lines and you can drag and drop from there. So if you clicked on one you can drag it along to another location. And you can do this with other patches as well. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 47 in this series. How to delete patch memories. Uh, if you no longer need a patch you can delete it completely. Uh, to do so, open the menu and select delete patch memory. From there you can touch the patch you want to delete. You can also select multiple in one go to be deleted. Uh, touch delete in the top right. You'll get an are you sure message and press delete again to delete. Or if you're not sure, press cancel to cancel. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 48 in this series. How to create a new patch memory. Uh, you can also create a new patch memory from the menu. Uh, click on create patch memory. Uh, this will open a completely blank patch. Uh, now you're on this completely blank patch. From there you can click on the empty effect slots and then select the effect you want to put in that slot. Uh, you can continue to do this until you're happy with your new patch. Uh, you can also use the um, functions at the bottom to add effects, delete effects, change any effects you've added in and change the patch settings. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 49 in this series. How to change the bank order. To change the bank order, open the menu, uh, select change bank order, and then touch the three lines on the right of the bank you want to move, and then drag and drop into the position you'd like to change it to. This can be done multiple times, for different patches, move to different banks. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 50 in this series. How to rename a bank. Uh, to change the name of a bank, open the menu. You want to select change bank order. And from there, press the keyboard icon of the bank to change the name of. So say we'll just give this a fresh new name. Click on the um, keyboard, delete the current name, and then add in your new name for that bank. When you're finished, press enter to confirm. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 51 in this series. How to delete a bank. Uh, if you no longer need a bank, you can completely delete it. Um, open the menu, select delete bank. From there you can touch the bank or banks that you want to delete. Uh, clicking the arrow will also show a drop down menu of the patches in that bank. So you can see which ones are in each one. Press it again to get rid of it. Then you select the ones you want to delete. Uh, when you've finished making your selection, press delete at the top right. You'll get an are you sure message. If you're not sure, press cancel. But if you are sure, press delete. And it'll delete those banks.
Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 52 in this series. How to create a new bank. To create a new bank, open the menu, select create bank, uh, touch the keyboard in the top right to name the bank, use the keyboard to enter your new name, press enter to confirm, and that's your fresh new bank. Uh, you can assign an already existing patch to a new bank. Click on the empty patch. Select a patch from a different bank. Press OK in the top right. And it will add it to your new, new bank. You can do this multiple times. Until you've completely filled up your slots. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 53 in this series. How to use the tuner. To activate the tuner, press and hold the foot switch to the right of the screen. Uh, this is labelled tab and hold for tuner. Alternatively, you can open the menu and then select use tuner. And this will open the tuner screen. Uh, once the tuner is open, play the open string of the string that you want to tune. Uh, once tuning is completed, press the tap switch again to close the tuner. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 54 in this series. How to change the standard pitch of the tuner. Open the menu and then select Set Tuner. And then use knob number 4, located here. Or the touch screen and you can adjust the standard pitch to between anywhere 435 hertz all the way up to 445 hertz welcome to how to music tech this is part 55 in this series how to set the tuner type open the menu and then select set tuner on the left of the screen you can set the tuner type you can select either chromatic or bass. Uh, chromatic shows the string being tuned to the nearest semitone. Selecting the bass tuner type uh, will result in the tuner showing the nearest string number to the string being tuned. So LB will show up for the low B string, 4 for the E string, 3 for the A string, 2 for the D string, 1 for the G string and HC for the high C string. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 56 in this series. How to use flat tunings. Uh, ensure you have selected the bass tuning type, as this setting doesn't work for chromatic, and then select how many semitones flat you would like to tune to. So for instance, if you want to tune the bass guitar to be a semitone lower, uh, select bass tuning type, and select one semitone lower, and then tune your bass guitar as you would normally. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 57 in this series. How to open and play the rhythm patterns. Now open the menu and then select play with rhythm, which is currently located bottom right. Uh, the rhythm patterns and settings are controlled by the touch screen only. To start rhythm playback, press the play button on the screen. And then to stop playback, press the stop button on the screen. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 58 in this series. How to change the rhythm patterns. Open the menu and select play with rhythm, which we've done here, and then press on the current pattern. Uh, then use the drop down menu to select a new rhythm pattern. Um, alternatively, you can use knob number one, located here, to cycle through the new patterns. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 59 in this series. How to set the rhythm pre-count. Uh, open the menu and select play with rhythm. That'll bring up this screen here. To set the pre-count to be used when using the rhythm patterns alongside the looper, 
Uh, to the right of the stop button is a toggle setting for the pre-count. It's located here. Um, if it's set to on, a pre-count will play before the looper recording begins. Uh, if it's set to off, there'll be no pre-count and the looper will start recording as soon as you hit the foot switch. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 60 in this series. How to adjust the rhythm tempo. Open the menu and select play with rhythm. And then turn knob number three, which is located here, uh, to a, or you can adjust using the touch screen. Uh, the tempo can be set anywhere from 40 to 250 beats per minute. Uh, you can also use the tap tempo function. The tempo set here is also used by some effects and the looper. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 61 in this series. How to adjust the rhythm volume. Open the menu like we have here and then select play with rhythm. And then you can use knob number four or the touch screen to adjust the rhythm volume. And it could be set anywhere to where between zero and 100. Welcome to How To Music Tech. This is part 62 in this series. How to use the send and return effects. Um, external effects that you may have can be used in conjunction with the B6. Uh, connect your external effect using the send and return jacks on the back of the B6. On the patch you want to add a send and return effect. Open the menu. Select use send return. Uh, select where you'd like the send and return to come out of the chain. So say you want it to go here. Press plus. Select Effects Loop, press OK, and now you've added it to your chain. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 63 in this series. How to add an impulse response. Uh, select the patch you would like to add an IR to. Use the drop down menu. Select Use IR. Uh, drag and drop where you'd like the IR to go. Uh, press the plus icon. Select the IR that you'd like to use. Press OK in the top right. And now you've added that to your chain. Welcome to Algae Music Tech. This is part 64 in this series. How to change the audio interface settings. Uh, you can adjust the output volume sent to a computer via USB and the balance of that signal and the B6 signal. Open the menu like we have done here and select set USB audio. Uh, from there you can use knob number one to adjust the level output via USB. It can be set to either minus six or plus six decibels. To adjust the balance between the USB and the direct signal, use knob number 4. Uh, it can be set anywhere between 0 and 100. If you set it on 0, uh, it will set the direct signal only. If you have it set at top 100, it will be the USB only. Um, anywhere in between is a balance between the two. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 65 in this series. How to set the auto save function. Uh, when the auto save function is on, any changes are saved automatically. If it is off, you must save changes manually. Uh, to set the auto save function to on or off, open the menu and select set system settings. From there, on the top of the screen, you get the autosave. You can use the toggle switch to turn it either on or off. Welcome to How To Music Tech. This is part 66 in this series. How to adjust the screen brightness. To adjust the brightness, open the menu and select Set Power Display. Uh, from there, you can use the touch screen to set the brightness. It will go up in tens from 0 to 100.
welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 67 in this series. How to set the eco mode. Uh, to set the eco mode to on or off, open the menu and select set power display. Then use the touch screen to toggle the setting to either on or off. And if on, the unit will power off if unused for 10 hours. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 68 in this series. How to check the current firmware. To check the current firmware, open the menu and then select Set System Settings. Click on Version. Uh, this will bring up the firmware version, the DSP version, the preset version and the boot version. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 69 in this series. How to restore to default factory settings. Uh, restoring settings to the factory default will override all settings including patches. Uh, to do so, open the menu and select Set System Settings. And then touch All Initialize. You'll get an Are You Sure message. Touch on All Initialize again. If you wanted to cancel at that point, you should have just pressed back. It'll take a couple of seconds, then you'll get an initialization complete. Press OK, and everything will be back to factory default settings. Welcome to How To Music Tech. This is part 70 in this series. How to format an SD card. Uh, once you have installed in your SD card, you'll need to format it for use in the B6. This will delete any data that is currently on the SD card. Uh, to format the SD card, open the menu and then select Set System Settings. Uh, then select SD card and then you need to go to Format. Uh, you'll get an Are You Sure message. Press on Execute to format it. Take a couple of seconds and then you'll get Format Complete when it's done. Welcome to How To Music Tech, this is part 71 in this series. How to check the remaining space of an SD card. Now to check the free space remaining on an SD card, open the menu and then select Set System Settings. Select SD card and then select SD card remain and it will show you on screen how much of the SD card is free. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial, I really hope you found it helpful. If you did, make sure you give it a like and subscribe for more tutorials on this unit and others to come. Plus if you'd like to support the channel directly, why not consider becoming a member? Thanks again, goodbye, see you in the next one.